Hello YouTubers and uh, welcome back to the Old Smithville channel. Today we're going to do a vice challenge. Uh, not to say that my vice is any better than anybody else's. It's just uh, to get an idea of how much these vices do move. Um, I have one here from uh, an East German foundry uh, way back when from the Cold War period. And uh, after watching Stefan Gotesbinda's uh, uh, video on uh, vice movement, I decided to come in and check it out for myself too to see just how much this thing really does move and uh, compare it to others out there that are on the market. I did see before uh, I come down to, to do this uh, measurement today that uh, another fellow had a link to his YouTube video on that subject where he has a Kurt vise and I know there's different sizes of Kurt vises out there, four, six, you know, five inches, whatever. Um, so if you fellas out there have one, uh, by all means, you know, jump in on the, on the discussion here in the machinist's uh, world uh, on YouTube and uh, chime in. It'd be interesting to know what the different vices do uh, tolerate, you know, what kind of movement they do have within, uh, within reason and to see, you know, just kind of where we're at. Granted, now, uh, in order to make this really scientific, we'd all have to uh, apply the same torque on the crank as you know all through the row you know each vice would have to have the same amount of torque on the or the same amount of pressure in order to get a good idea you know just how much movement is there but this isn't really a scientific uh, approach just kind of a haphazard one just to kind of get a rough idea you know so um, I did the setup on the camera on the on this vice here off camera but uh, let me bring you in a little closer and show you some of the uh, the challenges that we do face with with our machines on a day-to-day -day basis so let me let me get this thing uh, moved in a little closer okay I got my uh, dial indicator set up this is a uh, dial indicator by Teza it's real similar to the uh, dial indicator that uh, Stefan has his is a Mar I believe and this is a Swiss made there they both measure in uh, one hundredths of a millimeter and um, like I said, this vice is from uh, East German production, and there is some movement in there, but uh, just to show you that they're all similar, uh, we're going to go ahead, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Let's see here. And I'm going to use a, a one, two, three block. Now, interestingly enough, I do get a little bit of deviation on the table when I set the, the table lock. I'm going to use this one, two, three block. Let me get this get her out of the way here. I'm just going to set it up close to the top. As you can see right now the uh, the dial is on zero. I'm just going to set it in there. Let me get some parallels under this to, to make it a little bit more accurate. So that way the block is completely parallel and then we're not going to bias the uh, the reading any. Okay, now let me get this right around here to the right up front so you can see that dial just the way it should. You can see it pretty good right now but uh, this isn't a very good vantage point. Oh, balls, too much glare. Damn it. Let me see. Okay, this is going to be a little tricky. I got the uh, dial indicator all in frame. It's kind of a weird shot, so let me put a little bit of gronk on him here. And I'm just going to do a little bit of shop gronk. So we've got a movement of, looks like, 200, two hundredths of a millimeter. So I'll uh, put that in inches there in deflection or the, the I'm sorry the the deflection in inches there in thousands in the in the frame there I don't have it in my head right now let's see here oh wait a minute I can figure that out real quick oops Oops. Zero point oh two. 
So that's seven ten thousandths of an inch that this thing has moved. Seven tenths, you know, that's really not the world. Now, uh, let me see about uh, putting it in the bottom of the vise. And now this is just a little bit of standard shop drunk. Let me let me really reef on a little bit. Okay, now I've got four. So that's 14 ten thousandths. So 1.4 thousandths of an inch um, of movement. And uh, these jaws are, let's see here, uh, 40 millimeters tall. So that's a little over, almost an inch and a half. Um, now, one thing I haven't checked so far, and that is the how much the uh, vice jaw, the movable jaw, lifts. Now, this isn't a a jaw that uh, comes down or is pulled down by the movement of the vice, but rather, uh, yeah. Let me uh, switch the camera off here. I still have a problem with my thumb. Okay. <clears throat> now we've got the uh, other dial indicator set on the uh, movable jaw. And right now the movable jaw is, the, all the pressure's off. There's no tension on it. So now I'm going to bring it in just to, to where it touches. And we can already see a little bit of a movement there. And now I'm going to put some gronk on it. And we've got there with the gronk on it to where we have four thousandths or four hundredths on the uh, little little dial over here we've got uh, about nine in elevation on on the movable jaw and uh, now I'm going to take and, and without any pressure downward pressure on the workpiece I'm, we're going to see how much the workpiece gets raised up so let me move that over. It's kind of hard to work with all, virtually one hand. So I'm just going to let the chips fall where they may on this one. I'm not going to zero the dial. So let's see here. I'm just going to set it to the next increment. See if we can get it at 30. Okay, so there's 31 hundredths of a millimeter. Just for shits and giggles, this is going to be our, our zero, our point of reference. So with the average shop gronk, we're getting, oops, see, it went back down. But now, we're at 31, retighten, and it goes up to 8, to 38. So there's seven, seven hundredths of a millimeter in movement without putting any downward pressure, without tapping the workpiece down onto the parallels. So one of the things that uh, Stefan mentioned too that uh, was the deflection of the vise as it hung off the end of the table. Um, I'm a little disabled right now, so I'm not going to go ahead with that, but um, just to show you here um, on this vise, let me go mobile, sorry about the, uh, the wobble here. Okay, I've got a little bit of overhang on the vise. It's not much. It is 35 millimeters, so about an inch and a quarter um, that the vise overhangs on the table. Now if I were to loosen this up and bring it forward to where these screws were in this slot and this part of the, the fixed jaw was completely supported by the table, I would think that this uh, uh, the deflection in the in the vise would be a, a lot better. Um, like I said, I'm a little disabled right now with my thumb so I'm going to forego that uh, that dubious pleasure and uh, Maybe do that another day, but uh, just wanted to show you guys that uh, all vices do move, even the, the even the good German ones.
So let me reset the camera here. So YouTubers, anyway, uh, there you go, Stefan. There you have a, a challenge on your on your vice video, just to show you that you know there are, there are vices out there that have just as much, if not more, uh, deflection in the fixed jaw as yours does. Um, of course, this is just a standard machine vise from, from East Germany. Um, I don't have a, uh, uh, a, grinder, a grinding vise, one of those precision, uh, precision vises, so one of these days that's, that's on, the, uh, on the list of things that uh, if I stumble across it, I will pick one up, but uh, for right now it's just a little bit out of my reach. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> I'd like to thank all the new subscribers for coming on board and checking out what's going on in the Holtz Mitchell channel. And uh, I'd like to also thank uh, Stefan for the inspiration to make <clears throat> of starting a starting a vice challenge. So hope to see some other guys out there doing the same thing. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, by all means, leave them in the comment section below. There's always there's always something you can gain from the insights of others, uh, even if it is a negative comment. I mean that doesn't mean you got to go leaving a negative comment, but. Uh, I do appreciate any contribution, any constructive contribution towards uh, these type of videos that you do make. So, hope to see you again soon, and thanks for stopping by.